present a new time-dependent cosmic redshift effect. In special relativity, the rotation of bodies already propagating at light speed is a serious problem. We describe in arts as solving a group of anomalies and suggesting cosmic redshift is not all caused by accelerating expansion of the universe. Let's consider the expanding Schrodinger sphere wavefronts of stellar emissions. It's now well verified that light has orbital momentum, so helical paths. The orbit radii expand with the sphere surface over time because the orbiting charge can't exceed C on the lengthening orbit circumference measured in the local linear propagation rest frame. As solar emissions demonstrate, helices and spheres expand as spirals. Most helical paths are elliptically distorted and have random chiral polarity as a function of the linear propagation direction and the polarity. Ellipticity may have any orientation and either polarity. We should consider expansion of path circumference, not just wave packets. Many such co-rotating helical quantum state fluctuations may exist at any point on the expanding sphere surface and at all scales. Euler's original equations producing cosmic strings are rather equivalent to these evolving superposed fluctuations. Bodies at all scales form particle bow shocks when moving through a field. Here in Orion, observers at rest in both the star and nebula gas systems find local light speed C. The SR postulates don't demand light in the nebula also does C with respect to the star when outside the star's local rest system. If absorption by the shock electron defines local space-time domains, then Einstein's spaces within spaces makes perfect sense. Speed is only then measurable locally in a hierarchy of non-absolute states of motion. Observers in systems with other states of motion can't then use proper time, so find the asymmetries and anomalies. A star's spin direction then does affect values found when measured from a nebula rest frame. Momentum differences then arise from the polarity or phase velocity difference. The ratio diameter to wavelength is a constant in water surface waves is 4.6. This is not a real speed when measured in the local frame, so must simply be subtracted. The Godfrey-Jackson helix angle and phase group velocity ratio give the anomalies and at recursive scales. The parity oscillations are distorted into a cylinder, so should be measured as cylindrical coordinates orbiting in a translating rest frame. Phase velocity adds or subtracts from linear group velocity, but orbit time sets helical angles and ratio of linear to phase components. Variables are ellipticity, orientation, axis, speed, radius, pitch and polarity. The apparent phase velocity is positive for clockwise orbits, or reverse if the orbital direction is reversed but phase has no velocity or momentum when measured in the local linear rest frame. So reversal of phase velocities between polarities equals the CP and magnetic moment anomalies, but only when measuring non-locally. Circumference path length at orbital speed C then directly increases cycle time C and so also the wavelength, so inversely reducing frequency giving redshift we need cycle path lengths of helical ellipses. Huygens expanding spherelets interfere to give a charge density matrix. The charges couple and re-quantize the spirals. But some escape extinction, giving the redshift. Longer waves are less harmonic, giving the separate reddening effect. Electrons can accelerate and expand with no outside force. This recent finding echoes Simony's lattices. Comparing momentum as measured, we find positive has apparent positive phase velocity. For negative polarity, the phase velocity reverses. As orbit speeds also violate C, we must then measure orbital velocity and the local group rest frame. Phase velocity then doesn't exist, and parity anomalies evaporate. The helix is just a charge path. 
using SR fully locally solves what's really just a measurement problem. Now let's follow an orbiting charge. The spread function isn't thought to describe evolving waves, but the requantizations reduce spread to the right order. This Riemann atomic scattering effect is highly focused at surface fine structured transition zones, creating near and far field domains. So charge path orbital speed limit is C, but then charges themselves also spin. The hierarchy of co-moving frames emerges at all scales, gluons to superclusters. We can only physically measure locally. Rotation of orbiting charges can then look just like quantum spin. So at constant group velocity up to C, charge speed is also local C. And in the local orbiting rest frame, a charge also spins at C, as in QCD. Here we see the growth of wavelength lambda over time from increasing orbital path length. Cosmic redshift is a wavelength function, so inverse to frequency. If we ride on a light beam, as Einstein imagined, we'd find there is no preferred human scale. Local orbit speed is C because all frames are equivalent at all scales locally. Orbiting bound dipoles, each with higher order spin, give twin helices and non-integer spins. Harmonic state coupling can evolve complex toroid states from there. So we propose that Einstein's postulate propagates for the definite velocity C measured in all frames, infers being there at rest to physically measure, not just make assumptions and calculate. Redshift of a photon emitted 12 billion years ago would not then be all from the star's recession and cosmic expansion. Expansion of emissions also naturally redshifts light. The diffuse quantum vacuum of plasma and gas keeps light requantized and at local C. Speed is then always C when measured in proper time at rest in local inertial systems. Quasar jet pulses can appear superluminal, but only local measurement finds true local speed in the bulk flow. Nothing exceeds C where it is including emitted light. Beware of false assumptions. Speed is distance over time, but only in proper time. So when it rests locally, the coordinate time of moving clocks is invalid. Einstein conceived the domains we invoke in 1952, with a small space moving within a larger space, bodies spatially extended, and that SR does not have unlimited domain. Let's remember that Einstein described SR as all in the postulates. We just need more consistent application. They're satisfied if light within a galaxy is C when measured at rest in the rotating system. It's unmeasurable from afar. We also find C within Earth rotating and orbiting domain, but also can't measure that from elsewhere. Assuming we can do so is what confounds understanding. If a rest frame K is a real state of motion and proper time is local, then there's no CP violation, it's just different maths. Orbits are then real in the scale hierarchy of rest frames. Approximating the possible contribution of TDR to total redshift is very difficult. A first guess agrees some expansion, but no acceleration. As Popper suggested, when pieces of nature's puzzle don't fit, we should challenge old assumptions and seek deeper foundations. It seems we should just apply theory slightly differently. More pieces then fit, suggesting a fully consistent pattern does exist.